So we're gonna start the meeting since we have a quorum. Announcements. Okay. Got a few on here. Um, so the code amendments for Title 10 were approved by City Council on September 7th, and they will likely be read on October 4th and be effective on October 5th. The um, only thing that was different from what you guys talked about, multifamily, you guys brought it down from 2.5 to 2.2 parking spaces per unit. They took it clear back to the original two. That was no surprise. So, um, and then they also allowed um, banks with drive throughs in the downtown district. Just banks. And, yeah, and just banks. Anything that has that's existing. Drive yeah, so if they're grandfathered in. Yep, they're grandfathered in. So if they completely, let's just take Arctic Circle for instance. What about if, if, if it was there and another business didn't use it and then the next guy came by and wanted to use it again? That's still okay. If it's still it part still of the, uh, the existing building, they yeah. can reestablish it. Makes sense. Um, okay, uh, the Joint City Council and Planning and Zoning Commission Growth Workshop, September 23rd, um, at our building over on 12th, 500 12th Avenue South, mm -hmm. from 5 to 8 p.m. Um, if you have not already RSVP'd to Karen, please do so. And the, um, we are at the end of the year. We have two board members our commission members that uh, will be expiring. So Steve and Brett. Would, well, would you please change the terminology? <laughs> I'm not expiring. Not expiring. <laughs> Your their, term. their terms are expiring. <laughs> they are not personally expiring. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Um, and uh, there was processes, I believe, put in your packet to, to walk you through exactly what will be required to reestablish. But it didn't that. say in there how they were going to notify us, which you just did. But I, is that how it's going to be notified? Uh, there will be a press release going out to the community. I don't read the and, paper. And Karen will forward that to you. Okay. All right. She will let you know as soon as she knows. All right. And that's it for announcements. Okay. Approval of minutes. Make a motion to approve the minutes. Second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve the minutes. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, minutes are approved. Report on council actions. You, you have more for us? More for you. Okay, so council was on September 7th. They approved the Free zone for Old Town Nampa from DH to DV for the muscle half block. Um, they went along with your recommendation to do a development agreement with the DH uses listed in the development agreement. They liked that idea. Um, there was a variance that was going to accompany that, but they decided that the variance would not be required. Um, they're going to we're gonna take it on a case by case basis, depending on the tenants that might go into the spaces, we're gonna evaluate the parking per tenant. So at some point they may need a variance, but right now they seem like they're um, sharing parking with adjacent property owners and it's working fine, so. Uh, so that was withdrawn. Um, Harvest Creek subdivision on the east side of Happy Valley Road, the one that kind of had that long uh, annexation path. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it got approved. Then the next edge annexation on Madison got approved. Um, that was to light industrial, easy enough. And the uh, code changes got approved. We talked about that already. Um, there was a request for a reconsideration. So Sterling Commons, I don't know if you guys are familiar or remember this, this project. It was on um, Middleton and Iowa, Middleton and... Lake Lowell, um, and it was four um, fourplex units that were in, turned into townhomes with some open space mm -hmm. um, on the property that had previously gone in for storage units and got denied. Okay. Um, City Council went ahead and approved it at a lesser density. They came back with a new design to turn in with their development agreement and their rezone, and it all went through. 
the ordinance got read, recorded, and in the meantime, someone came in and asked for reconsideration of that ordinance. They denied the reconsideration, so they, it's done. They won't be hearing it anymore. Sterling Commons is approved and going to happen. That's that, that southwest corner? Correct. Okay. Yep. Um, they read an ordinance for annexation. This was from two years ago. 44 South Kings Road was annexed with an RD zoning for fourplex apartments. They finally read the first ordinance for that. Um, so that's done and off of our agenda. Sharps Orchard on Birch Lane, um, that ordinance for annexation to RS4, that was completed and done. Um, and then Lions View Estates at 707 Davis Avenue, which is for um, single for single family homes, just a real simple little one, uh, was a zoning amendment from RA to RS6, and that re they read that ordinance and that was done. Oh, there's one more. Good grief. <laughs> oh, this one was an annexation and zoning to RS6 to hook up to city utilities um, at 1028 North Middleton Road, and they read that ordinance as well. So that's it. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. We have no business items. We have Brett online. Oh, Brett's online. Yay. And is Michelle on now? Okay, cool. All right, so public hearing number one has been withdrawn and public hearing number four. So we just have three tonight. We have three applicants here. No, yes? Yeah, I was gonna say I had continued to no, no. We only have one and three. Number two got. Number two is continued. Yeah, the only thing I can continue is three zero two. You had no date. It's, it's, we'll talk about that. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. We got one minute. At least the clock on the wall is Better. right now that we, Rodney got went up there and fixed it. You got a step letter. <clears throat> okay, I have seven o'clock. So. Public hearing number one is going to be 2307 Lone Star Road. Do we have the applicant for that? Uh, Madam Chair, he, the applicant, uh, we contacted the applicant and he indicated that uh, due to his uh, age and um, he just wasn't, in, wasn't able and interested to be able to come and represent his family. This evening. Okay, so we're just going to go to staff? Yep. Awesome. Okay. Um, so the, the uh, item before you is an annexation and zoning to RS7. Uh, this is uh, at 2307 Lone Star Road for a connection to city water and utility services. Um, the uh, property is uh, <clears throat> located in uh, Canyon County in an enclaved area. Um, there is adjacent residential in the area. There's a, the Schoenberg Place subdivision to the north and then uh, some single family residences in the area. Um, the, uh, the property meets all of the qualifications for annexation due to adjacency. Uh, there are utilities available to the property um, and it does have legal access. Um, the engineering department has indicated that they can serve this property. Um, the regulations uh, are stated in your staff report. Uh, these are the standard uh, regulations, conclusions of law that are required for an annexation and for a rezone. I'd be glad to review any of those if you desire. Um, the schedule of uses is also in your staff report. This is a single family, uh, 7,000 square foot minimum lot size. And uh, it is in the, uh, 
the RS uh, residential district and its own. Uh, the correspondence, um, oh, excuse me, the staff analysis. Um, this Again, this meets all of the requirements um, required for annexation and, and zoning. Uh, and uh, all of the requested uh, uses are permitted land uses within the RS7 zoning district. Uh, we had no objections from any of the agencies that gave us comments, um, standard language from the building department. Uh, and school district um, engineering division is working with the applicant on the right-of-way dedication and the applicant has agreed to that and also to the conditions in the staff report. Uh, the conditions of approval are reflective of the uh, need for the engineering department to dedicate the right-of-way and uh, uh, to follow city codes and policies and to protect waterways that uh, are in the area and any additional conditions that the commission wishes to impose. And with that, I'd be glad to take any questions. Any questions? Okay. Move we close public hearing. Second. <laughs> we haven't even opened public hearing yet. We've had no <laughs> questions. Is there anybody here that wants to testify on this? Okay, now you can close public hearing. <laughs> I was just practicing. Okay. <laughs> I'll move that we close public hearing. Still second. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to close public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, public hearing's closed. All right, yeah, I'll also make a motion that we approve. We recommend approval of the annexation and zoning to RS7. Zoning District and Potential Development Agreement at 2307 Lone Star Road in order to connect to City Water Utility Services for Lee Robinson with all conditions of staff. I'll second that. Okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve um, the annexation and zoning. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, that's approved. Okay, so we're going to open public hearing or... <coughs> We're going to open public hearing number two and continue it to win, Christy. October 25th. So do we need a vote on that or just? Does somebody need to make a motion? Yes, you need yeah. to make a motion. If do you want to know why or do you care? I do. Yeah. <laughs> Um, there were some comments made by engineering that they would like to address first before they come before you for their approvals. That's it? Okay. I thought it was going to be something dramatic. <laughs> Did you say 26th, August, October 26th? 10 26, uh huh. All right. I, I would make a motion, Madam Chair, that we continue this public hearing. Um, from tonight to the date of October 26th. Second. I'll second that. It's been moved and seconded to continue public hearing item number two. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, that's continued. All right. Now we're down to public hearing item number three for Cayuse Meadows, did I say it right? Okay, come on up and tell us what you want to do. Uh, so it's, it's my project. So hey, give us your name and address for the record. John Pasco, and I think it's the Cadulli address you have there. So um, just had a lot of interest in this piece of dirt and um, it's near and dear to me. I've been there my whole life. Um, just kind of wanted to get it started in the right direction, that, a direction that I would, you know, they're larger lots. Um, you know, we've gone through all the hoops and hurdles, gotten everything done that, you know, you guys have requested. Um, utilities are right on the corner of the parcel. There's plenty of uh, depth with the, the sewer. Um, yeah, I think it's just time. I mean, it's, um, but I, I, I want to make sure that it's, uh, 
it's a nice part of town. I mean, I, again, I've lived there my whole life, and um, I want to. I didn't want to get going down the road with somebody that might go a direction that you know I might not be as agreeable to. So I, I have, you know, I'm optimistic of something very nice and nicer size lots, nice homes. So okay. other than that, I'll let Jesse uh, okay. give you all the nuts and bolts. And <laughs> Thank you, John. <laughs> Hello, wow, Jesse Christensen, Eco Engineers, 2151 West Willow Point, working with the Pascos to get this subdivision moving. We met with Christine Caleb, <clears throat> excuse me, a couple months ago, started working towards a preliminary plat that would meet city standards. We had two roads in there. They reduced it to one entrance access point. We continued the road through the subdivision for connectivity to the west, if that parcel ever goes uh, towards the subdivision. I mean, we're going to be pretty surrounded here pretty soon. Mm -hmm. So it, it seems to be the right time to, to move forward with this. Follow the landscape plan out in the front, city and NAMPA requirements, sewers on site, water's out in the road. Um, property slopes naturally to the northeast, so storm drainage will be back in that area. I think it fits, it fits pretty well. All of the lots are slightly larger than the subdivision around us, a little over 8,000 square feet for all of them, some 10,000 square feet. Um, I don't really have much more than that that John didn't already say, so. Okay, well, we'll hear from staff and see Very if we good. have any questions for you. All right, all right I'll be thank close. You. Okay. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair and Commissioners. Um, the request before you this evening is a recommendation to City Council for the annexation and zoning to RS7 and for the preliminary plat of the Cayuse Meadows subdivision at a property located at 826 West Dooley. Oops. The property is currently outside the city limits and it's contiguous to the city limits on the east side. Um, it is bordered on the southeast and north by city-zoned RS7 property and on the west by Canyon County Agricultural Property, and there are services available to the site. These are the applicable regulations for annexation and zoning that you'll need to consider when you're making your decision. We received public input from one neighbor stating that this would affect traffic, the existing resources in the area, and it would block their view. Um, we also received standard comments from the building department, code compliance, the forester, the police department, fire department, and the engineering departments. Um, the police and fire both indicated that there would be, um, you know, 0 0.8, 0 0.3, 0 0.54 positions uh, required with this addition of population. The area consists of RS6 zoned city subdivisions with two county parcels to the west that currently house one residence and a vacant lot. The future land use designation is medium density residential. This subdivision proposes a gross density of 2.8. Our comp plan calls for 2.51 to 8 dwelling units per acre, so it is on the low end of that scale. Um, Skyview High School is approximately 2.1 miles away. South Middle School is approximately three quarters of a mile away. And Lake Ridge Elementary is approximately 1.25 miles away. So the um, analysis of the plat, it is 6.46 acres. There are 21 um, lots. There's one open space lot that equates to 3.5% of open space. There are two common lots that consist of landscaping and right of way, and that's 2.81 acres. And then the buildable lot count is 18 lots. So in an RS7 zone, the standard building lot needs to meet or exceed 7,000 square feet in area. They have proposed the smallest lot at 8,004 square feet. The average lot size required in this zone is 8,000 square feet. Since there is a total of 18 buildable lots, when you remove 20% of the largest and 20% of the smallest, you come up with 8,621 square feet per lot average. So they do meet that. 
Uh, there are no surrounding platted lots that exceed the area proposed for this subdivision, so there's no compatibility requirements. Um, all lots demonstrate the required width and depth for this zone. There is a 40-foot right-of-way from the section line uh, for dedication required on Dooley Lane by the engineering department. The forester stated that the evergreens should not be used along the sidewalk on Dooley Lane, so they are requesting a revised landscape plan to be submitted with the final plat application. Um, and then again, there are there's 3.5% uh, of open space proposed on one open space lot. The conditions of approval are listed here and in your staff report, and they include the items that were stated in the analysis and the correspondence from the other departments. And this is your potential motion for annexation and your potential motion for the plat. I will stand for any questions. A question. Uh, when this gets developed, will there be a stub street to the north and possibly to the west for future development? Is that, is that just... You want me to get up or? <laughs> yeah, great. Yeah. If you can. All right. Great. Um, can we go back to the that one? To the north um, is a small single lot all by itself. I see. So with the, actually, I think it's his barn on it, and we're going to include a small stub so he can get through to that, but it, there's no intention of, uh, oh, I see. of ad annexing that and developing that part. The, I think it's under an acre. Am I correct? 1.5 acres up there, so there's no intention of annexing that, but we are stubbing to the the west for future expansion. And the comment from a neighbor about uh, obstruction of the view, did that come from the Skyview or Rain Tree, or do we know? Uh, it came from Skyview to the northeast of the property. Couldn't um, that sit a little bit higher anyways? It does sit a little bit yeah. higher. They're already looking over four houses or so before they will see these houses. So unless we build objection? a bunch of five-story houses, it's not going to be that much of a problem that I can see. What was their objection? I mean, they already got those houses right in front of them, so... It was going to spoil their view. They took a picture of their view. I think it's in your... Is it in their packets? Yeah, but it doesn't show anything. It just shows a little bit of open yeah, space. Right. It's just... So it, it shows the open space, yes. It's so. big enough to put a... Build. Yeah. Field. Yeah. Right. The, the obstructed view in the field. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> Got it. Let's take care of that. That's all the questions I had. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. I don't know if anyone else has. Well, we got to do public hearing. Okay. We'll have you come back probably when we go to public hearing. Okay, we're going to open public hearing. I have one person signed up. Uh, Barbara Lauterbach. It got continued. Oh, the one that got continued. Okay. No, I just, it was just the next one on in the pile, so. You can speak to this one if you want. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, is there anybody else who wants to testify on this? Oh, yeah. Okay. All right, I would entertain a motion to close public hearing unless you have questions for the applicant again. So moved. Second. It's been moved and seconded to close public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, public hearing is closed. Any discussion, anybody? Madam Chair, I make the motion to recommend approval of the annexation of zoning to RS7 zoning district potentially development agreement, potential development agreement at 826 West Dooley Lane a 6.46 acre parcel in Southwest, so on and so forth, and for Joe Pasco, with all conditions listed in the staff report. A second. Excuse me. I know you just seconded it, but I was just looking at something here. In the conditions of approval, number 10 mentions New York Landing subdivision. And HOA, isn't that over off of Lo or behind Locust? 
off of Alma? I believe yes. that is a cut and paste error. Okay. error. I, just, I figured as much. I just wanted to make sure that we're not. Yep. I will make sure that that is taken care of before city council. Okay. <laughs> okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And moving along, Madam Chair, uh, I make the motion to approve the preliminary plat for KUS, KUS Meadow subdivision for 18 residential lots, uh, totaling 3.44 acres, common lots totaling 2.81 acres, and open space totaling 0.21 acres, for a gross density of point, uh, excuse me, of 2.80. A lot of densities and things in there. Uh, net density 5.23 at 826 West Dooley Lane, a 6.46 acre parcel for Joe Pesco with all conditions all conditions listed in the staff report. Second. You guys keep fighting over that. Just <laughs> alternating between Jeff and Matt. Yeah, okay, it's been moved and seconded to approve. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, and that does it for our meeting tonight.